हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस डिस्कस सम एनवायरमेंटल इमरजेंसी कंडीशंस राइट इन विच द फर्स्ट कंडीशन व्हिच आई विल डिस्कस विद यू इज एनाफलैक्सिस नो व्हाट इज दिस एनाफलैक्सिस वेल वी नीड टू नो द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एनाफलैक्सिस एवरी इमरजेंसी फिजिशियन शुड नो हाउ टू मैनेज एनाफलैक्सिस राइट सो हाउ डू आई अप्रोच अ पेशेंट इन एनाफलैक्सिस बिफोर approaching we need to know what is anaphylaxis how it is different from anaphylactoid reactions what is what is the difference type of presentation which anaphylaxis can produce etc so little bit not very much in detail little bit about anaphylaxis so what is anaphylaxis anaphylaxis refers to characteristic and often life threatening clinical manifestation of immunoglobulin e mediated mast mediated hypersensitivity sensitivity reaction involving mast cell degradation leading to histamine tryptase and prostaglandin leukotriene release right so what is anaphylaxis it is a life threatening clinical manifestation which is ige mediated right it is a hypersensitive reaction involving mast cell and basophil degranulation the mast cell and basophil they degranulate and because of this degranulation there is a release of release of histamine release of tryptase release of prostaglandin and leukotriene right which is incited after exposure of various substance right so how it is different from anaphylactoid reaction anaphylaxis is different from anaphylactoid reaction so clinically anaphylactoid reaction is indistinguishable it is same as anaphylaxis but unlike anaphylaxis which is ige mediated anaphylactoid reaction is not ige mediated it is a direct mast cell degranulation right it is a direct mast cell degranulation causes of anaphylaxis there are various condition which can cause anaphylaxis like food like nut eggs fish milk antibiotics vaccines anesthetic agents insulin and other hormones antitoxins blood and blood products insect bites snake bites latex allergy immunotherapy all these can cause anaphylaxis right now anaphylactoid reaction that is not ige mediated it is local mast cell degranulation can be caused by nsaid opiates sulfite radio contrast media neuromuscular blocking agents gamma globulin anti sera and exercise right now how do they present what is their presentation we are talking about presentation of anaphylaxis or anaphylactoid reaction both they can present within minute of exposure usually less than 1 hour after exposure immediately after exposure to these substances the reaction can precipitate but it is usually less than usually in less than 1 hour rapid on parental route rapid reaction on parental route if the precipitating substance is given iv the reaction is more rapid first symptom flushing pruritus and sense of doom patient shows flushing intense pruritus and intense sense of doom patient becomes very depressed so these are the first symptoms of an anaphylaxis reaction what is the clinical presentation clinical presentation clinical presentation can happen in each system we'll go system by system i what can be seen in i pruritus lacrimization conjunctival edema periorbital edema cardiovascular hypotension tachycardia arrhythmia cardiac arrest right eventually initially it would be hypotension because of vasodilatation because of hypotension tachycardia arrhythmias can happen it can lead to cardiac arrest gastrointestinal uh, manifestation nausea vomiting diarrhea abdominal pain skin manifestation pruritus flushing urticaria angioedema etc respiratory dyspnea stridor difficult swallowing pulmonary edema anything can happen 
neurological anxiety sense of doom seizure can happen so immediate treatment is indicated for all patient with significant respiratory cardiac and gastrointestinal symptoms so we need to give a immediate treatment and remember there is no absolute contraindication of giving epinephrine to any patient epinephrine does not have any absolute contraindication and this is one drug which is drug of choice in anaphylaxis okay so how do i manage a patient in anaphylaxis airway breathing circulation like any other patient early intubation is mandatory in these patient because airway edema can lead to airway obstruction later so later on maybe i'll have to do a cricothyroidotomy or if my patient presents little late maybe i won't be able to intubate i have to get prepared for cricothyroidotomy right breathing we have to give oxygen to our patient we'll start with we start giving our patient oxygen and for circulation we put two large bore cannula and once i have put the cannula as fast as possible i give iv epinephrine right and attach and or definitely i attach the cardiac monitor epinephrine is drug of choice in managing anaphylaxis i am epinephrine if i am giving it i am i have not secured the iv cannula yet the dose is 0.3 to 0.5 mg 1 in 1000 dilution anterior or lateral thigh we given give it in anterior or lateral thigh and if i give iv epinephrine then 0.1 to 0.2 mg 1 ml in 1 in if we take 1 ml of 1 in 1000 add 10 ml of 0.9% normal saline to it and we can give it every 1 to 2 minutes so it has become 0.1 mg 0.1 mg per ml so every 1 to 2 minute i give 0.1 to 0.2 mg right i give 0.1 to 0.2 mg if patient responds if patient responses to epinephrine the symptoms starts decreasing we give our patient h1 h2 blocker both diphen diphen hydramine h1 blocker i give 25 to 50 mg iv and ranitid in h2 blocker i give 50 mg iv so if patient has a response i give h1 h2 blocker if there is no response right there is no response to adrenaline then i can go for glucagon 1 to 2 mg iv im every 5 minute to effect for continued hypotension patient is having continuous hypotension i may start epinephrine infusion 0.1 microgram per kg per minute titrated to effect and start a continuous aggressive fluid resuscitation if patient is not responding to adrenaline which is very unlikely in anaphylactic shock we give a glucagon and for control for continued hypotension i start epinephrine infusion and continue aggressive fluid man resuscitation remember in anaphylaxis there is no role of steroid of giving steroid in acute phase but steroid has a role to prevent the phase 2 react phase 2 reaction stage of of anaphylaxis so maybe once the acute stage has gone i may give a dose of steroid but in acute phase for management of anaphylaxis there is no role of steroid right so once patient has stabilized and no known cause of allergy has been discovered in that patient what has exactly caused it then we refer the patient for testing and monitoring to a allergist if a known cause of allergy can be identified in that patient which has led to this anaphylaxis then it is mentioned in his medical record and medical books and may be a band attached to the patient that he is allergic to that particular drug for future okay thank you